Good morning, y'all, y buenos dias. So today's video is my next Q&A. So I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to leave a bunch of questions and I got a ton of questions. So hopefully I'm gonna try to speed through this, but not too fast to where I'm not thorough enough, but just so that I can get through most of the questions. And also if I don't answer your questions, probably because it was a repeat question and I'll leave the links to all of my other Q&As down below. Okay, so I'm gonna be on my phone referring to this, so if I'm looking down, that's why. And my first question is, any tips slash books on raising a healthy vegan toddler? Currently transitioning, and I have a one-year-old of my own. Thank you. So for that, um, I have two major advices to raising healthy vegan children. And this is for any age, and also even if you're not vegan and you want your children just to have more fruit and veggie intake, is number one, which is probably the most important one, it is lead by example. So your kids will inevitably want to eat whatever it is that you're eating. And when you're eating super healthy foods, um, that's what they're gonna gravitate towards. So if you have tons of super healthy foods around the house, that's what they're gonna wanna eat because that's what they see you eating. And number two, which pretty much just goes along with that, is always have super healthy options available for your kids at all times. I get both sides of this because like with Luna being a vegan conceived, vegan raised child, you know, she doesn't know any different. So a lot of the times it's like easier just for them because that's all they've ever known. But also with my little sister and Zach's little sister, uh, they're here all of the time over the summer, winter break, they've always been at our house and we have a strictly vegan house. So they just always ate whatever it is that we had on hand, whatever it is that I made. And kids love fruit. They are naturally, we all love fruit. Like humans are just naturally driven to the sweetness of fruit. So having fruit available, I think is just like key uh, with kids of all ages. Like I said, my little sister and Zach's little sister are 11 and 13 and they'll just destroy bananas and apples and mangos and just all of that stuff because we always have it on hand. Same thing with Luna. Luna will eat peaches and blueberries and just whatever kind of fruit. I mean, kids love fruit. So uh, leading by example, showing them that you're eating those foods too and that you're not eating junk food, but they have to eat that. That's just a no-no and they will pick up on that. No matter their age, they will pick up on that and also just having super healthy options readily available for them. The next question is, how did you transition Luna from two to one naps a day and was it around the 18 month mark? So with so much with Luna, I didn't transition her and she just did it all on her own. Um, I'm pretty sure it was before the 18 month mark. Um, it was maybe a little bit after the, I would say maybe 14th month mark, uh, she just stopped taking another nap. And so that's just how it happened. Um, if anything, I would have wanted it to last a little longer just so that she slept more, but now she takes one nap and it's anywhere between 45 minutes to two and a half hours long. Uh, typically it's around an hour, um, but if I for some reason am laying down with her, she'll sleep for a lot longer. My next question is relationship advice. Um, this is pretty vague, so I'm gonna give a somewhat vague answer because I don't know like if it's through like partner or like parent or whatever, but I really think that communication is just key uh, in any relationship, whether it's romantic or not. Um, I think that by having open dialogue with someone, you're able to more clearly know what it is that you want out of the relationship and what they want out of the relationship. Um, more on a partner romantic side, Zach and I have been together for seven years and obviously like every couple, we have tons of ups and downs, but we are a fairly just chill couple of you guys, you know, there, there's tons of you guys that know us personally and you guys know that just we're really chill and laid back. And I think that has a lot to do with just the fact that we are super, super open when talking to one another. And like, we're just very straightforward with what it is that we want out of a relationship, out of life, out of everything. And so having open dialogue with someone is really key and also like another side of like a romantic relationship is 
be with someone that you actually want to be with. I know this sounds like super like obvious, like duh, I don't wanna be with someone who I don't wanna be with, but there's tons of people who are out there and they like have always had the feeling that they're just like not the right person and just not the right one. They're just wasting their time, but they just keep going because like out of fear of getting out of it. And you want to be with someone that if you're doing the most mundane tasks like washing the dishes or cleaning the car that you want to be with them and like You know, like whenever Zach and I are doing something like we everything is like a game like everything is like Like we make it into something and I think that's how it should be You don't want to be with someone who like it's a drag to be around them and they're just like sucking all the energy out of you and just like it's just not fun um, not like woo fun, but like like just not an enjoyable time to have them around. So yeah. The next question is, has Luna tried curtido or yuca? And she's tried both actually. Whenever we were in El Salvador, she tried both uh, when we were at a pupuseria. And uh, she likes the yuca cause it's kind of like a papa. It's like a potato, but the curtido, she was not having it at all. The next question is thoughts on gelatin slash animal products in prescribed meds slash antibiotics. So for this one, um, there are vegan options sometimes with certain medications like they have like the uh, the vegetable gel caplets as opposed to the gelatin gel caplet capsules um, but if you don't have another choice in the matter and you know there is no other option you just need to take your medication um, there's tons of people out there who opt out of taking certain medications when it's truly necessary um, just because there's animal products in it and the reality of it is at least how i see it if you need to take medication you need to take it um there's tons of things that um still test on animals that we have no control over and that hopefully um uh, with you know the right activism and the right changes in legislation we'll be able to move past that but that's just our reality that's just the world that we live in um animals are abused on a daily basis to provide us with certain sadly like needed things and so um like i said that's super unfortunate and of course i hate that that's the norm but if you need certain medication and it's necessary then i just believe that you need to take that the next question is how can you gain weight on a vegan slash plant-based diet so this was actually one of my biggest concerns when I was pregnant for Luna was am I going to be able to gain weight because I'm already like a very small frame person and even when I wasn't eating a vegan diet um, I still never really gained that much weight and so that was my biggest concern was how am I supposed to gain weight when all I eat is arroz con frijoles you know and luckily I gained the exact amount of weight that I needed. So your body will progressively gain more weight as long as you are eating tons of really healthy stuff. So I know that sometimes with morning sickness, it's super hard to even get anything in, but if you can find like tweak around and try to figure out what it is that you still can eat, if you have morning sickness, then try to eat that as often as possible. Um, like try to make it a smoothie that you really like or you know, whatever it is and add like peanut butter or almond butter and stuff like that to it just so it's calorically high. Um, and add like all kinds of nuts and seeds to it that also will bring up the calories and also boost up the nutrition. And so there, there's tons of little things like that, but like I said, that was something I was super worried about just being like a smaller person. I was like, man, am I even going to be able to gain weight? Like, what am I going to do? But just on its natural course, I did end up eating more just because I was pregnant. And I was more hungry and naturally I just ended up gaining the exact amount of weight that I needed. <laughs> the next question is who's your favorite cousin, Marjorie or Kiara? And I'm going to say it's a package deal, both. The next question is, do you want more kids? And the answer is, of course. Uh, Zach and I always discuss having more kids and like when we're much, very much planners. And so everything is always meticulous with us. And that's how I was with Luna. And so we're just trying to figure out, you know, when the best time is now. The next question is, does Luna have a middle name? Yes. So Luna's full name is Luna Isabella Rivera Bell affordable and sustainable clothing brands so i want the answers to that question i have not been able to find any um affordable like truly affordable 
sustainable clothing brands. I'm gonna try to link a bunch of Instagrammers who like that's like what they do is find like eco-friendly brands. But A, I haven't been like consciously like trying to find it, so maybe that's why I never find them. But um a lot of the sustainable clothing brands, which I guess makes sense, but a lot of the sustainable clothing brands are really expensive and way out of my budget. So I don't buy them. But like at the same time I get it because you know they're paying their employees fair wages and they're buying uh, sustainable materials which are usually more expensive. So like I get it, I get why the price is more expensive and if you can buy it that's totally awesome to support those brands. But as far as me, <laughs> I haven't bought anything. I usually just buy everything from the thrift store because it's more sustainable and it's cheaper. <laughs> The next question is, when did you become vegan? And I love you. I love you too. Um, so I went vegan about six or yeah, like six years ago. Um, and it was a very slow process and we went vegan because of Mowgli. I've told you guys before and I want to make like a whole video talking about it. But um, when we were in college, we started talking about this ridiculous idea of having a pet pig and so one Christmas Zach got me Mowgli for a present and <laughs> and y'all she was this big she was three pounds and she was just the tiniest most adorable little thing in the entire world and she lived in my studio apartment. I lived in an apartment that's like no lie like a little bit bigger than my office now and it was a mess, y'all. I wish there was like a. I wish there were vlogs of whenever I lived in that apartment because it was unreal. We had a mini pig, Zach, and our best friend Marty, and we all lived in this tiny little apartment. It was hilarious. But anyways, so as soon as we got Mowgli, um, we decided that we couldn't eat pork because it would be really awkward because she was a pig. And slowly, we started watching more documentaries and stuff like that, and just realizing that animals feel pain, animals feel love, and that no animal deserved the kind of cruel, unjust, and just violence that they were living due to the fact that we wanted to eat meat or animal products. And so we slowly just started chipping away, chipping away until we got to the point where we we're no longer eating any animal products. And then after that, we met our super awesome friends, uh, Ernesto and Lindsay. I'll leave their, um, their Instagrams and links down below. They're super awesome vegan activists from Chicago. And we started talking with them. We met over Instagram and then we ended up going visit them. And like now they're like one of our best friends. And um, they got us more into the vegan activist side of it. And yeah, and that's just, that's how it happened. The next question is just wondering your thoughts on vegans eating eggs from chickens they've rescued or chickens they have that lay eggs no matter what. People in my family keep bringing this up and I was just looking for another vegan's point of view on the subject. I haven't eaten animal products in three years. Not sure I'm willing to start over some eggs. So this is super controversial even amongst vegans. Um, just personally, uh, I wouldn't eat them just because you know, like, like, kind of like what they said, I'm not going to start over something like that. Like, that's just not a point that I see is valid. And also, um, many of the time, this is something that not a lot of people know, but chickens usually eat their eggs. Um, if they're just like out, they'll usually just go and pick and eat their eggs. And so at the end of the day, they're not our eggs. So that's just kind of like the broad way of seeing it. Like, that's not mine to take. But also, um, I do understand how certain people can see it the other way. Like, I kind of get it. But just from my perspective, my opinion, um, I don't see it as something that I would ever do. And even more so, it's funny just because, like, I loved eggs. Like, that was, like, the one thing that was the hardest thing for me to give up. Like, I used to eat huevos every single day so much like with like ever since i was little until i started being vegan like huevos every single day like every day and so being someone that was like addicted to eggs i would say nah and so for my last question it is a very adult related question so if you have kids or you are a younger person watching this video please opt out um but yeah the next question is how do you have sex when you co-sleep so I get this question a lot, right? And 
it confuses me why other people would be confused because we just do it anywhere else. Like, um, that's, that's it. Like, you know, if she's sleeping in the bed in our room, then we'll just go anywhere else in the house. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's it. The couch, the floor in the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, whatever, whatever it is, like whatever we're the mood for, I guess, that day. But yeah, if she's, if she's sleeping, then we'll just go somewhere else. That's always been what we've done. So that was it was never ever an issue. There's people who say like, oh, co-sleeping will ruin your sex life. We have not found that to be true at all. If anything, it's more fun because you're going places that you don't normally do it in. And so yeah, like just go in the other room. Like especially if you have like a guest room. Like we don't have a guest room, but like go in the other room or or anywhere in the house. I mean like that's that's a non-issue at all. Um, like that's just a non-issue and so for anyone who's ever like you shouldn't go sleep it ruins your sex life i can guarantee that that's just false information um no that's not what happens at all uh you make it adventurous and you go somewhere else you be playful and you go outside i mean like literally the world is your oyster like no just go somewhere else so that is it for the questions. Uh, it's kind of like getting like a ridiculously long video. So I'll add the couple of the ones that I didn't answer onto the next one. But yeah, if you guys uh, enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also if you have any other questions, you can DM them on my Instagram page. Uh, I have like another list going on of, um, of questions that I need to answer for the next time's video. But as always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Gracias, Mati, for watching and I'll talk to y'all later.